Greetings everyone, Blue Goblin here for my comic book review for this week in August 2010. I had eight books to cover, but before I get started with that, I need to do something that I should have done last week. Uh, I need to uh, plug this for those of you who have not seen it yet. If you've already seen it, then you know what I'm talking about. Let's take a good look at this. This is a Marvel Universe figure of the Green Goblin, but get a, good, get a better look at it. <gasps> That's right, folks. This is a blue go This is a one-of-a-kind blue goblin action figure. Yeah. <laughs> Where did I get this? Well, in case you missed it on my girlfriend's channel, uh, my girlfriend made this for me. And once again, I want to thank her. And Jennifer, if you're watching this, I love you, baby. And I'm sorry that I didn't plug it last week. <laughs> Please forgive me. And thank you again. I really love it. This is going to go hanging back up. A limited edition, <laughs> so to speak. A Blue Goblin action figure. Ain't that awesome? Alright, now, on to the comic books. Let's get started with the wall crawler. We're going to start things off with Ultimate Spider-Man number 13. Uh, huh. You know, this book is still mediocre at best. But, for what it's worth, I'll gladly take this over Amazing Spider-Man's One Moment in Time right now. At this current moment, and at this current moment, Ultimate is better than Amazing right now. Because of Joe Quesada's egotistical bullshit. However, this still feels really dumbed down from Volume 1 of Ultimate Spider-Man. And Volume 1 was incredible. You had Bendis when he was writing it really good. And you had Mark Bagley's artwork. And you had uh, Stuart Eimanen take over. Which he wasn't that bad either. But, you know, this series has really sloped downward since Ultimatum. But, in a nutshell, this issue was, at best, good. Just good. Alright... Avengers Prime, number two of five, focusing on the big three, Steve, Tony, and Thor. Um, okay, this is interesting. I can, I can work with this. Uh, Bendis can, um, he can write, he can write for Tony Stark. I'll say that. Now, whether Steve or Thor, I don't know. Thor, Thor was done pretty well in this. The artwork's great, um, but I did like the twist at the end. I'm not going to spoil it, though. Even though this was simply a good read at best, still don't want to spoil it because I actually enjoyed reading this. This this felt like old school Avengers stuff to me. And right now, Avengers is getting overkilled, like, all, not quite as bad as Deadpool and Wolverine, but it's being overdone. But, yeah, this was a good read for what it was. Uh, I loved how Tony Stark was written by, in, by Bendis in here. Thor was done pretty well as well, and it's always good to see Enchantress, but the, the twist at the end was good. I liked it. I think you should go ahead and pick that up. Next up, Booster Gold number 35. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know... This really pains me to do this, but I have to be honest. And as much as I love the character of Booster Gold, I gotta say, this one, again, did not satisfy me. The thing that hurts this title is that the overabundance of dialogue. I mean, there's just so much dialogue, there's hardly room for any pictures of the characters. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's just flat out ridiculous how much dialogue is in this book. When books are written like this, with so much dialogue, it's very easy to get lost, and it's also very easy to get bored. Um, and there were just lines in here that were so lame. You know, it, 
there were lines in here where you could tell, well, I could tell that the writers were just trying too hard to be funny. And when, when, a jo when a joke seems like it's trying too hard to be funny, it generally isn't funny. No, what the heck, I'll laugh anyway. <laughs> so, because of that, because of the cartoony artwork, I mean, the artwork seems to be getting worse for me as the issues go along. And the overabundance of dialogue is just killing me. It really is. So, unfortunately... I'm sorry. I had to do that. It was just... That was a weak issue. But let's move on. Justice League Generation Lost, number seven. Yeah, number seven. Now, here you go. This was good. Finally, we get a Booster Gold booster gold in a book that's fantastic. Not to mention the rest of the JLI. You know, now, I must admit, last issue felt like a fill-in to me. It just felt like a fill-in, you know, take a break, you know, remind the readers what they got to do. And if, you know, just in case there are some people who are just now jumping on board, if you've been following since issue one, it's always been the same thing. Stop Max Lord, stop Max Lord, stop Max Lord. Now they're finally getting to work on it. They still, now don't get me wrong, the team members still bitch and complain with each other, but at least they're now starting to do their job. They're trying to bust in the checkmate and try to find up, and trying to find any information to prove Maxwell Lord's existence. And it's good. The character development is spot on with this. It's just, it, it's reading like JLI all over again, and um, I gotta admit, the one thing I didn't like was the, the changed artwork. I don't like what they did with Booster Gold. They they draw they drew his goggles to completely cover up his eyes. It's kind of kind of playing like a Scott Summers thing. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's just not working for me. That's the only drawback I had to this particular issue was I could tell that the art the art had changed slightly. It's still good, but not as good as it was. But you know, then again, it's good storytelling by Winnick. So I'm gonna let that slip and say this is still a great series to be on board with. If you haven't if you haven't jumped on board yet, I suggest you start because this is actually a great tie-in to Brightest Day. Uh, find the back issues if you can. It's good stuff. If you're an old school fan of the JLI, I think you'll like it. All right, uh, moving along. Let's sing uh, Batgirl number thirteen. Yeah, it's been a while since Batgirl's been on this review. That's because here lately, Batgirl's just been feeling kind of blah lately. But, you know, since my comic book reviews can be longer now, I'll give Bad Girl another shot. Uh, this is a one-shot, sort of. It's a, fil it's a, it's a single-story It's a single story issue, you know. Basically, Bad Girl versus Clayface. That's all this is. It's really all it is. It's a simply generic Bad Girl title, but it's still pretty good. I enjoyed reading this. For what it was, it's you know it's been a while since I've seen Clayface, and it's time for Clayface to take on the rookie. See if see if uh, you know Stephanie is you know truly cut out to be Batgirl by taking one taking on one of Batman's deadliest enemies in Clayface, and it was good. I gotta admit, it was all right for what it was, a simple generic one shot. Simply good. That's all I can say. I've been on board with Batgirl since issue one, and you know, until I find, until I read an issue that is completely disastrous, I don't see myself jumping off at any time soon. You know, it's just, it was just good for what it was. Moving along, we got Titans number twenty-six. Wow! <laughs> now Titans has been picking up. I know I didn't review number 25. Maybe I'll do a written review for comiccrazyreviews.webs.com. Plug! But, um... <laughs> but, um... And, wow! Depth! There's depth to this new storytelling. With this new team, Deathstroke being the leader, that alone... Just say it. Deathstroke leading the Titans. That alone intrigued me to get back on board with this series. Good stuff. If you've been following along with this with this storyline of the Titans, you need to have caught up from the Titans Villains for Hire one shot, which was good. 
then jump on board with Titans from that point. Stay away from Sean McKeever's shit. Uh, but jump on board with this, but this particular lineup. Very good stuff. Um, it, I'm actually, I'm actually impressed with where this title is going. I don't want to say anything because I don't want to spoil it. Because usually, when a book is really good, I don't like to spoil any of it. I'm just saying, this surprised me by how good it was. That's all I think I need to say. Let's move along. Birds of Prey, number four. Uh, wow. This was good, too. Gail Simone, Ed Dennis. Thumbs up. Great job. This was incredible. Much, much better than issue three was. This is probably... This is probably the best the best issue out of the four that's been out so far of this particular run of Birds of Prey. Of course, that's just my opinion. I mean, anybody else's opinion can vary. And of course, I'm going to respect that. But in my honest opinion, this is the best issue of Birds of Prey that's been out so far for this particular run. Very good stuff. I loved it. The drama, the intensity, uh, the cliffhangers. I mean, a cliffhanger doesn't necess necessarily have to happen at the end of a book. It can happen some at some point during the middle. I, wow. I was I enjoyed the hell out of reading this book. Very good stuff. Uh, Gail Simone. Don't ever leave Birds of Prey. Don't not, don't ever let anybody else have this title. This title is yours and it should stay yours. Write it like this and you've got a guaranteed seller. Good stuff. I gotta admit the white, the black canary versus white canary thing was awesome. Uh, I thought the ending of the fight was a little bit of a cop out, but it was still good. I, I loved the stuff with the penguin and the rest of the team. Just fantastic. I loved it. All right, now for the pick of the week: Green Lantern Emerald Warriors number one. I have been waiting for this series to get started. And now that it's here, Peter Tomasi, kudos to you. Great stuff. Guy Gardner, no pun intended, he shines in this book. Just incredible writing. The artwork is fantastic. This, this fits. This is yet another Green Lantern title that I can be on board with. Just Pure fantastic. Guy Gardner's character is hit spot on. I, I just... I, I, I just can't... I can't say anything else but say this was easily my pick of the week. It's very well written. It ties in nicely with The Brightest Day. And all I can say is if you are already a Green Lantern fan then pick this up. you got nothing to lose. It'll probably be one of the best 399s you'll spend this year. Good stuff, once again, from DC and from Peter Tomasi. Green Lantern Emerald Warriors, number one, my pick of the week. There you go. Well, I don't know how much time I ate up here, but hopefully I got it all in. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. And while you're at it, if you don't mind, go to my girlfriend's channel. She is known as Lenora2003. And once again, Jennifer, I love you, sweetheart. Uh, once again, thanks for watching. And until next time, everybody, I'll see you later.